Hey, one thing I want to know is would it be helpful if I did a live event where you can write in your questions and answer them live? Uh, let me know in the description box below. I'm, I'm interested in seeing this. I've been kind of toying around with it. Hey there, my name is Jason. I'm a registered sleep tech, also the founder and moderator of freesleepadvice.com forward slash forum. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, video uh, YouTube questions that I receive. I don't go through it that much because I'm usually on my forum answering these questions first. But every now and then I let it build up on YouTube and I'll go back and I'll answer them now. But if you want to help support us and what we're doing, the information on YouTube as well as the um, keeping this forum up to date and answering questions, there are some ways that you can support us if this is something that you're interested in. One is super painless. You can just shop on Amazon using our link here. We also have links usually in the description box below. Uh, so any shopping you do on Amazon, we get a little cut of. It does not make your stuff cost more. We just get a referral fee. That's how that works. Super painless. The next is to just do a donate button, do a straight donation to our PayPal account. And that is right here. You can also do a monthly uh, support by clicking on this Patreon box. And then you can donate like a dollar a month, two bucks a month, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you're like, piss off, Jason, I don't want to do any of this crap. You can do that too. But if you're like, piss off, Jason, I don't want to do any of this crap, but I still kind of want to do something, you can talk to your friends about you know, CPAP, talk to them about our forum, this lab note exists, as well as our YouTube channel. And you can share our videos, you can like our videos, that kind of thing. All right, let's get started. So this is pretty much like a grab bag. I have no idea where these questions are going. So the first one we'll start with is Johnny Greenway. Pay attention, this might be some question you're, you're wanting to know. Hey, I use this mask, and the mask is the AirFit F10. I use this mask with my machine. The problem is the bottom straps. I have a lot of pain with them on my lower neck. I've had to go back to using my original Swift mask. The problem with it is it's hurting under the bridge of my nose. I like the full face mask, but can't stand the hurting in my neck. Do you have any su suggestions? Uh, I'm very, very confused. He has a problem with it hurting underneath the bridge of his nose. Bridge of his nose. I'm guessing it hurts right here. But then he talks about the hurting in his neck from the straps. Those sound like two totally different questions. So if that in fact is a problem, I'd probably just switch to the Amara view because the Amara view actually fits underneath the nose instead of having something that comes up over your face on top of your nose. It fits under the nose and then still covers up your mouth if I'm understanding the, the question correctly. Now if the, the headgear is still causing you problems, the headgear is still causing you problems. There's some other products from uh, Patacheek I did a review on a while ago, and it was a, a mask strap, but you can use the mask strap to hold your mask tight, but you can have it, instead of going down by the base of your neck, you can have it going up around you know, the crown of your head instead, or up around the back, the occipital protuberance. You can do that. That's it. So this guy here, Richard Wall, this is a little bit like love mail. I feel like I'm being loved. I may have to come up with like a love mail song. I love Jason cause he is awesome And I want to see him on a basket rug With no shirt So what he says is Sleep apnea is very real if left untreated it'll I'm just gonna paraphrase it'll dick you up while it may be true that uh, it's not the only approach with dealing with sleep apnea, it's the most practical and least invasive. Uh, there's lots of weaknesses with it. Um, he says his attitude was bad and that there was no home support or follow-up and his doctors didn't know what the hell either. Uh, he said another weak point was the mask, learning how to fit the thing. Uh, thinks that there should be professionally fitted masks designed for each person. So what he's saying is if you have sleep apnea, keep on trying, keep on working it out, and you'll eventually get there. And he does say, while, this is another point he says, which I like, because it brings it full photo, and I don't have to say it myself. He says, what I didn't say is thank you for making and managing a YouTube channel that provides much needed support for this very misunderstood illness. This is definitely love mail. Now, I also mentioned I do have a website, uh, freesleepadvice.com, which is floating above my head here, uh, as well as a forum, freesleepadvice.com forward slash forum. I get to those questions way faster. Next comment was, this was so helpful. It has to do with throwing your mask, tearing it off at night. If you haven't seen that, 
barn burner. I would totally watch it. Thanks, that was so helpful. And now that I know what's going on lately, and your prices on Amazon are great, I will be ordering. I don't have prices on Amazon. What that was is a link to Amazon. And I already mentioned that. If you want to help support us and you already do your shopping through Amazon, you can use them. And then I'll get a little referral fee. That's all it's about. So anyway, I appreciate your support, kind sir. Okay, Margie Diane Carter. Why do I have a snuffy nose in the morning after I wear her mask or after she wears her mask? You probably have a stuffy nose because you are getting nasal congestion. Um, your inside of your nose is flaring up, most likely because of a mouth leak. So air goes in your nose and it comes out your mouth. If it does this, the inside of your nostrils get super irritated. They dry out. When they dry out, they get pissed off and they inflame. That's a congestion you're feeling. So the solution to that, increase the humidifier humidification they'll keep them moist and happy the other thing is to get rid of your mouth leak um, how do you know if you have a mouth leak or not um, you would either remember it going doing that kind of stuff or you can download sleepyhead the new website for sleepyhead is sleepyhead.jedimark.net okay sleepyhead.jedimark.net that is where you download sleepyhead you can use Sleepyhead to insert your SD card into your machine, and with that, you can find out all kinds of data. I have a ton of videos on it. Go to my website, freecfapadvice.com, and from there, you will see a header that says uh, Sleepyhead. And when you're in that, all kinds of videos tells you everything about it. Here's a good one, uh, Stoney Thompson. I lost 40 pounds in the last five months. I was really hoping that would get me off the CPAP. Sadly, it did not. This is in response to a weight loss video I had. Just a very simple exercise program. If you haven't seen it, it's rad. Um, but it makes a great point. Hoping it would get you off CPAP, it doesn't. I think I mentioned that in the video and I mentioned that other places. Just because you lose weight doesn't mean you're gonna get off CPAP because the tissue has already stretched. Uh, think of it as stretch marks. You know, you get chubby and you get stretch marks on your stomach after you lose all that weight because everything is already kind of stretched out just kind of sucky but that's what happens uh, same thing with your upper airway the, the tissue has already been stretched you lose weight it's still flabby sleep apnea still remains and so what they're saying is it didn't really work but they lost weight so hey you lost 40 pounds congratulations uh, this person says just that you know what you already you already won by making yourself healthier uh, congrats there, there is another solution to that or another solution another upside to that and that is one, you're healthier, but two, you're probably gonna require a little less pressure so it's less sucky if you don't like the pressure of CPAP. It's kind of like a win. All right, and then they say, uh, again, with the weight loss one, I talk about diet as well. They say, if it has a commercial, don't eat it. Words to live by each and every day. I don't know, I guess no frosted cocoa puffs. Steven Aguilar, thank you, man, for all your advice. I'm a veteran that has been diagnosed with severe apnea. I've been using CPAP for about two weeks. I have trouble with my mask, it's always leaking air. I tried everything you mentioned on your videos to fix it. It works sometime. I was looking into buying mask liners. Have you heard about Silent Night mask liners? If yes, do they really work? I have heard of them. I've never tried them, uh, so I don't really have an opinion of them. What I would say is to try different masks. Um, there's one mask, really the shape of your nose is totally irrelevant, and that is the Respironix Dreamwear. It fits under your nose, it's very comfortable. It doesn't leak really at all, and it comes with all the sizes in it. Um, so I would actually try a different mask first. I, I think that if you, the one thing to do, and it sounds like you already tried it, is don't over tighten your mask. If it's too tight, it's gonna create folds in the silicone, perfect pathway for air to leak, so don't do that. The Dreamwire makes it very hard to do that, and so I would suggest that, um, and it doesn't move around a lot. I would try changing masks. That's that's exactly what I would do. And also maybe the Swift FX Nano is my second favorite mask. So I might give that a try as well. Rob Vass, hey Jason, just want to say thanks for helping to normalize something using CPAP. I was a bit scared about it when I started six months ago. Your videos are great and I'm a follower of your forum too. Boom, cool. You know what? Boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna thumbs up that. Okay, Chris Call, again, This I must have just put this out. Again, in, the, in response to the weight loss, what about those of us with central apnea? Okay, central apnea is a completely different monster in this. Central apnea is not weight related at all. In fact, a lot of folks with central sleep apnea are pretty thin. So losing weight isn't gonna do a damn thing for central sleep apnea. It's a totally different mechanism. Yeah, so sorry, it really doesn't apply to that. I'm new to all this, thanks for making these videos. You are quite welcome. Cheyenne Diane. Cheyenne Diane is a follower of mine. She posts a lot of questions and I love it. 
I love it, love it, love it. So Cheyenne, Diane, you keep on posting. I always like your positivity. How many times a day would you recommend doing these exercises? Is it just once a day? I would say yes, just once a day. By the way, uh, thanks. Just need to change my eating habits as I love my sugar. You know what? I find myself, if I eat sugar, I start getting into these like ruts of uh, sugar, 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 and it's very hard to break. But once I do break it, I find that I don't crave sugar. So really it's just getting over that first hump and I'm done. <laughs> I said hump. But seriously, Dr. Pepper is like my uh, number one nemesis. Don't do candy so much, but Dr. Pepper, oh my God, I will drown on that stuff if I allow myself to. So really stopping that and finding something else as a substitute that you like, like I'd go iced tea without sugar or anything in it, just totally plain. But you just have to find that thing that works for you that you, you maybe don't like it as much, but you dislike it less than other stuff. Kyle Looney says, in response to a full face mask video, it looks like it's the Quattro Air. Does, I just purchased the mask, can you tell me, is it okay to sleep or rest with your mouth open with this version? Yes, any full face mask that you have, it is okay to open up your mouth. That's the whole point of it. In fact, fitting the mask, you're supposed to have it to the, the they call it the nasia, the low point of the bridge of your nose, to quarter of an inch to half an inch below your slightly agape mouth. So, uh, like that. So yes, it's absolutely fine to sleep with your mouth open. So pixelate you about changing your CPAP pressure. Excellent, I was waking up with a belly full of air, not good. My numbers for a week. Thanks for the sleepy egg tip. tip. After hassling the doctor and vendor, bump the pressure down, the HI is less, and no more pain and burps. Thanks, Glenn. You rock. Far better than my DME, my primary doc, and my sleep doc. Clinic all rolled together. And then they made the little heart sign. Uh, I'm not Glenn, but I know where to find him. Hey, yeah, you're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. This guy, Chris27, full. It's been three days since I started using CPAP. And every night for four to five hours, I felt a horrible pain. And this is, has to do with um, aerophasia. If you're swallowing air in your sleep, you get it in your stomach, and either you're burping, it's painful, or you wake up farting your bute off. So he's saying thanks for the tip and the laugh. I had a lot of people, oh my God, how embarrassing. Look, I'm wearing the same t-shirt in this video I think I posted like three years ago. Wow, all right, apparently I need a new uh, wardrobe. A lot of people were very critical of this video because they said it's a horrible position for your neck to be in. This position, the tucking your head to your to your uh, chest, it's not a permanent fix. It's like a month at the most while your upper eso esophageal sphincter has time to heal. It's not a permanent thing, so your neck should be fine. And using common sense, if your neck does hurt while you're doing it, stop doing it. So Hari Kuyo asks a very good question. They're, they're a college student, sleep, uh, 10 to 14 hours a day, can't make it to classes, lost a job. Say their apneas were less than five, no improvement or little improvement with sleep hygiene, their thyroid uh, thyroid function is fine, my family history of thyroid problems with no sleep uh, problems they know, of. very vivid and nightmarish dreams when waking up, no cataplexy, they do have brain fog, no improvement when depression improves and sleepiness does not stop. So you say your um, apneas are less than five. My question would be, what was the apnea hypopnea index? Because that's including RERAs, which are respiratory effort related arousals. Uh, go to my website, freecpapadvice.com. Look up uh, under the tab sleep disorders, and then you can look up RERAs, and I think it might be RERAs slash UARS, and that'll show you what they are. So it's a decrease in your breathing. It does not result in a 5%, I'm sorry, it does not result in a 4% saturation or more <clears throat> and so that would get you a classification of a hypopnea which would be included in your apnea hypopnea index which is what most doctors look at if you were to consider RERAs as well you would have a respiratory disturbance index of much higher so in your case I would suspect that you have a respiratory disturbance index an RDI which is much higher and what those do is they still wake you up you still feel like crap exactly what you're experiencing but yet you're not going to be diagnosed with sleep apnea so you need to find that number. Hopefully the sleep lab actually recorded that number and sometimes your doctor can find a way around it um, and still get you like a CPAP machine or some kind of a treatment for it. If not, uh, there's always Craigslist. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There's always Craigslist and you can kind of just go go your own your own way. That's what I would do if it were me. Stefan or Stephen Helly um, got a, basically got a mask. 
and they have a problem with uh, the mass, the full face mass itching and irritating their skin like crazy. Any solutions to that? Yes. I would get um, two products I like. One is the Padded Cheek Mask Liner, and it's a mask liner that you just, they have different sizes for different masks. So just go to Pad a Cheek, P A D A C H E E K dot com. Find the mask you have, and I think they're around like 16 to 20 bucks for them. They're reuse, reusable, and it'll line your mask so the silicone is not touching your face because that's what's itching and irritating is the lack of breathability. This creates a little barrier between your skin and that, <clears throat> and so it just makes it more comfortable. The other option is basically the same thing, but they're called Remzi's liners, R-E-M-Z-Z-Z. Do the same thing, except that they're, they're disposable. So you, you can check out the prices on each and see what works for you best. Uh, go from there. So Adolfo, he is using, it looks like a wisp mask, and it's tight on the bridge of his nose and sore all the time. He has a small, medium-sized mask, and so he's wondering if he needs a larger size or to just go with a different kind of mask. Yes, uh, with that, I would try a larger size first because it should not even be making contact with the bridge of your nose. It should be up here where it's making contact. And then beyond that, I wouldn't tighten this quite as much. Sometimes slightly looser is good. You'll find that you can get away with a lot looser than you think if you just let it happen. Okay, Bob Kelly, he basically said, well, I love your rebel style. I love Jason cause he is awesome And I want to see him on a basket rug With no shirt That's me, a rebel. So he says he has, um, he basically wants to change the flex option and change that And that his, well not, it would, let's see, yeah, it's flex option So A flex or C flex, when you exhale it decreases the pressure slightly on a ResMed mask, or I'm sorry, on a ResMed machine, this is referred to as EPR, which is expiratory pressure relief. Basically what both of them are, Aflex and EPR, is when you exhale, it decreases the pressure slightly. When you inhale, it goes back up to the normal pressure. It's supposed to be a comfort setting. What he's saying is his doctor and supply company have it um, locked in the off setting. And he told him he wanted to unlock it and got a bunch of crap. And so is there a way for him to unlock it? Get around the red tape. Yes, Bob, there is a way. Um, there's a, a another um, another website called um, Apnea Boards. I think it's apneaboards.com. It might be apneaboards.net. I'm not sure. Um, they have a form and stuff, but you can email them and, and get the... Um, actually, yeah, that's the one machine I don't have a video on yet of how to unlock it, but you can find the information on how to unlock that from them. They're also a free site, so <clears throat> they're definitely worth a look. Um, that's pretty stupid though. I, you know what, to, to be quite honest with you, I would recommend leaving it on off, although it, it would piss me off too that they're telling you, but telling you that you can't adjust it yourself. But that's one of those things that whenever that, that EPR or Aflex is turned on, it seems like it starts to cause a lot of central apneas. And every time they turn it off, it goes away. So it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, this guy asked if I have a favorite full face mask. I really don't. As long as it seals, it's a good mask. So basically here I got a bunch of people that use a neti pot after I'd seen my neti pot video and they say, yeah, this absolutely works, it's great. So this lady here has a dry throat instead of a dry mouth. So dry throat, dry mouth are the same thing essentially. It's still a mouth leak. The dry throat is just a different uh, manifestation of it. So you still need to address the mouth leak uh, to fix the dry throat. So this person says that they're trying to avoid using CPAP because all they've heard are really bad things about it. I would say there's equal people that have a lot of good things to say about it and people who have access to uh, timely information, um, support boards like mine, freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum, do a lot better job when you have support from people who have been through the same problems and have easy fixes. So I'd say give CPAP a chance if that is something your doctor's saying to use because um, really there's no a lot of these products like this is in response to the provent Th those things are kind of scammy um if you have a question about one i'm more than happy to throw my two cents in but give it a shot there's there's so many people that uh, find cpap to be extremely helpful and work for them so this guy golf nut is asking about some surgeries to fix sleep apnea basically i would avoid all surgeries with the exception of the maxillomandibular advancement uh, that's one i would feel comfortable in recommending to people as well as fixing any deviated septum that you may have um, in general, oh, and also removing adenoids and tonsils, things of that nature, especially for kids. 
Um, other than that, I think I would pretty much avoid all surgeries. So this guy's trying to stick up for me for the airing, uh, some of the airing stuff. Basically he says, um, through Jason's videos, I've learned how to adjust my mask for no leaks. I've slept five hours straight last night, woke up with no headache and feeling good. Only the third day. Can't wait to see how I feel after a month. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome, Bobo. And then person above says they recently discovered free CFO device on my YouTube channel. They've been on BiPAP for 10 years and have learned more from me in a week than they have the entire 10 years previous. And they haven't even started to dig into the forum yet. That's cool. Thank you, Great Cat. Really just a bunch of love mail here. I love Jason because he is awesome. And I want to see him on a basket rug with no shirt. Which is good to see, but nothing to answer. Oh, except for this guy, Joseph Archer. Thank you, but you are a long-winded piece. How's this for concise? Suck it. And here is my challenge. This person from the CPAP store USA, that's so wrong, use a professional, shouldn't do that. Talking about changing the pressure of a CPAP machine. I'm just asking, what is, if you're a professional in a DME or a doctor's office, why shouldn't patients be changing their own pressures? I'm super curious to hear your uh, valid, reasonable response to that. All right, we're gonna end it there. So please let me know if a live event would be helpful for you and please keep your questions and comments going. Again, look at the description box below if you want to try to donate to us or help us out in any way. Thanks, bye.